Hello, I'm John Eldridge, and welcome to the Ransomed Heart audio podcast. For more information on Ransomed Heart Ministries, our resources, and events, please visit us online at www.ransomedheart.com. I want to start with the parable of the Minas from Luke 19. While they were listening to this, Jesus went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Are you going to be flipping pages while I'm while I'm trying to read this. I'm just opening my Bible. (laughs) A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. But his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. As we were praying about today's podcast and probably um, a few podcasts in addition to this one, we were asking Jesus what he had for us this week and what he wants to address. And somewhat to our surprise, he said, leadership. Yeah. And then among a number of things, he brought to mind the parable of the minas and the posture of these people, the posture of these servants of the king, the posture of this community toward leadership, toward this king. We don't want this man to be our king. And Mm -hmm. I thought, Craig, I thought it was a good launching point to say, when you hear the word leadership, what are some of the things that, that come to mind? Is that a warm, affectionate, welcome term? Yeah. Or does it have other associations that come with it? Well, you ask that question after reading this parable, and I immediately identify with those in the parable. Um, I don't want to follow this guy. I don't want, you know, leadership. You're willing to be a leader or follow a good one, but most of our examples and experiences and fears are that, you know, anyone I submit to is going to be a bad one. And we have a long list of of that. So when you say, after reading this, it's like, ah, I don't want to follow a leader. I identify, you know. And what is that? Go a little deeper in that. What's in that posture? Well, a long history of having a, a following crappy leaders. They're not good leaders. Mm. And... Mm. You pay a penalty for having been under a leader who isn't a good leader. Yeah, yeah. Why do that again? Right, right. And then, you know, of course, there's a, just a fierce independence that I don't want to submit to anyone or anything, including yes. the leader of leaders. Yes, and therefore we can quickly summon a roster of bad experiences to justify our yes. posture, right? Yes. I'm going to. Um, come in from another angle for a moment. As I was driving in this morning, thinking about this, praying about this, I was struck by a parallel. Um, Fatherhood is at the center of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. God is our father. Fatherhood is in some ways at the core of the universe because you have the father and then you have the son. Mm -hmm. And as we talked about in a hundred different contexts, the father daughter, father-son relationship tends to be the single most defining relationship in our lives. Now, not always. The, in the other relationships may tend to be more influential for good or for bad, but there's something core we can all accept that, that fatherhood is crucial yes. to understanding Christianity, to understanding God. And what I was aware of was, therefore, the long-sustained assault on fatherhood to just get our hearts to Mm. distant from that. George MacDonald says the hardest, gladdest thing is to cry out to God, Mm -hmm. Father, 
from a full heart. It's hard. He describes it as the hardest thing Mm -hmm. because of the way fatherhood's been sabotaged in the world. Mm -hmm. Fathers that we've had or not had, fathers we've witnessed, our own failures perhaps in fathering. So here you have this unbelievably precious truth, this incredibly rich heart of Christendom. God is your father. Mm -hmm. And you have this wicked, long, sustained assault on that to just sabotage it, just cause people, you know, we do this exercise sometimes at our men's events, we just ask guys to free associate on father. Like what are the words that come to mind? And you know, eight out of the ten words are not good words. Right. You know, now some guys say affectionate things, right? Yeah. But you can hear this sabotage. Yes. And therefore, the pulling away. Don't really want to go there. Don't mm-hmm. really want to talk about that. I, you know, relate to God in a lot of other ways, but having a hard time with the father piece. Yes. So I saw that this morning coming in, and I went, man, the exact same thing has happened. With leadership. Yes. Right? I mean, even to say the word, we want to talk about leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Free associate uh, on leadership and what do most people share? What do you hear? Right. It's probably not great stuff. Probably not warm. <laughs> probably. Affectionate. Yeah. Respect, yeah. honor, yeah. trust. Eager. Mm-hmm. Eager to follow, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, and as we described, I mean, there's different reasons for that. But you just see, like with fatherhood, you just see this long-sustained assault against leadership. Because as we were praying here in the studio this morning, um, getting ready to turn on the, the recording here, we were asking Jesus his thoughts. And the first thing he said to me is, I'm a leader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it was like... It settles it. Yeah, it was. It was just like right, and so I think in the combination of kind of this sustained assault on leadership through sin, through through bad experiences. I mean, give me five words that come to your mind right now, your heart, when I say leadership. Well, in my case, I immediately think of a few individuals and how. Uh, how horrible they were in my life and the wounds, the messages. Okay, so the words are, uh, it just feels like that's a burden or expectation or weight. I've got to follow. Uh, Obligation, that's one word. Mm. You say leadership, Mm. obligation Mm. right? to support, to follow when everything in me I don't like the direction I'm going here. <laughs> I, I just want you to free associate. Yeah, and, I, I don't like the word. I me. don't. The more I'm thinking about it, I hate the word. I don't want to follow a leader. I don't like leaders. But there's immediately exceptions. I've had a, a number of good leaders in my life, but they fade by my experiences of the bad leaders. It's almost like people, when they pay you compliments, I mean, I'm sure like studies have been done on this, but, you know, 10 people can tell you that they love that shirt you're wearing today. And then one person says, yes, right. And what do you remember? Yes. You know, so we have had good experiences. We don't remember those. And you know, what's interesting, John, is my good experiences and the people I'm thinking of in my mind are good leaders. I don't even really think of as leaders, they're just good men who influenced and mm. shaped mm. and mm. had vision. When I think of leaders, I just immediately go to the negative. I know. I know. It's so sad, just like fatherhood, just like, you know. And so that's why I think Jesus started with those words. First, he said to me, I'm a leader. And then he asked, how do you feel about my leadership? And I'm like, oh, great. Like, Oh, I'm, I'm totally good with that. And it felt like start there. Hmm. It was almost like Jesus was sort of recasting the whole conversation, mm-hmm. right? That don't start with the sabotage. Don't start with the, the fouling of leadership over the years in our lives, whether that's parents or school teachers, pastors, priests that you've had. Um, your own, you know, leadership experience, bosses, that kind of, Jesus says, hey, over here, yeah. I'm a leader. 
Yeah. How do you feel about my leadership? Yeah. Uh, generally really good. <laughs> we have our differences, but yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. If it was simply following Jesus, who he is and all of that, yes. Yes. My issues with following Jesus aren't don't have much to do with him. No. No, but sometimes the things he asks us to do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And that's something valuable to press into, right? That just because a leader asks you to do something you don't like doing doesn't make him a bad leader exactly. or her a bad leader, right? Yeah. I mean, that two-year-old who's putting his foot down, you know, to his mother, at that moment thinks his mother is a horrible leader. You know, she actually may be a phenomenally wonderful leader, Right. He just doesn't want to submit to that right now. So when you say, John, um, Christ this morning says, I'm a leader, where does that take you? I oh, mean, it's huge. It's huge because it immediately takes me to write, write, the kingdom of God is not a democracy. Mm-hmm. And I think those of us in the West, and most of our listeners are going to be from sort of Western context, you know, we have been raised in and inculcated in, you know, democracy as a way of looking at the best way to govern. But actually, the kingdom of God doesn't agree with that at all Mm -hmm. on a human level, perhaps. But the kingdom of God is a kingdom. And so that's where it took me. I went straight to, oh, right. Like, I think I have kind of this casual posture toward organizational structures, yada, yada, and I forget um, this isn't a democracy Mm -hmm. that we're living in. We have a king and all the implications of that, right? I have a leader. I am a follower. Mm -hmm. And so maybe a really fruitful line of inquiry would be, what is a good follower look Mm -hmm. like? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, as we're talking about leadership, John, I'm just immediately thinking your thought about we follow a king, there's a kingdom. Whatever our place or role of leadership, whatever realm we have, one of the first things we're talking about is simply that we are under another's rule, reign, leadership, right? Right, right, there's, exactly. There's no independent, I am a leader, Every leader is a follower. Every leader is a follower. That's good. That's good. Every leader is under a king. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the other scripture that struck me, so with this, Jesus said, I'm a leader. And I went, oh, yeah, right. The kingdom of God is like totally, it's a kingdom. It's not a democracy. You know, it's not, it's not group leadership. It's Mm -hmm. not. And, and then I was thinking about church history and the desert fathers and abbots and um, bishops and all of that. And I thought of Hebrews thirteen seventeen, where it says, obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, hmm. for that would be of no advantage to you. And I, I just, I cracked up. So that their work will be a joy. I mean, Uh okay, fascinating. Our posture, attitudes, assumptions, background history are shaping the way we view leaders, but it's shaping leaders' experience of us, right? Mm -hmm. And that their work may be a joy, Mm -hmm. right? Like, Mm -hmm. hey, don't be a pain in the ass, (laughs) Right? It just cracks me up. That's kind of where my thoughts went is, oh, yeah, we live in a kingdom. And, oh, yeah, the scriptures kind of make a big deal about, like, submitting to leadership because this isn't kind of a communist commune. We're sort of hanging out together, you know, making group decisions like leadership in a health food store. You know, like we have leadership because the kingdom is built on it, right? It yeah. just, man, it just starts rearranging all these internal categories for me of, oh, wow. And then a joy, make it a joy for them. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. That's down the road for me, the joy part. But that, 
that thought that like gravity and any other law as we live in a world where we must acknowledge that there is someone above us it just sounds key to living life and key to being a leader is some submissive I'm a follower element I mean I'm just wondering without that where we left if we try and lead and live without a king without being a follower where does that take us mm. Mm. that's fascinating because I've had Stacy say this to me a couple of times and I've had other women that I've had in my counseling practice back in the day when I had a private practice say to me that their greatest experience of rest is a man who is submitted to Christ mm. because then they can trust his lead, mm. right? Because he is a follower, mm -hmm. right? Because you ask, where does that leave us? It leaves us with chaos mm -hmm. if we're not all followers, mm -hmm. if we're not all under one king, ultimate, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's your whims. It's your hunches. It's your impulses. It's your indulgences. It's, right? Yes. You know, if you're lucky, you get somebody with good character. Apart from that, it's kind of a chaos of little tyrants, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Every man doing what was right in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. So there's something just essential to life, let alone leadership that comes from a heart's posture of submission or uh, following another, this acknowledgement that I'm under a king, that I too am under another. This is huge. Craig, you had a conversation last week with a friend of the ministry who has been a missionary in China for, you know, decades, uh, I think going on 30 years, and he had come back into the U.S., and he was describing his experience of being back in this country and kind of what the cultural feel is. And I remember he said two things to you about this. Yeah. He said uh, his two observations of the Western uh, world, Western Christians, was uh, one, just this fierce independence. We put such a high value on independence. Now, an aside there is simply he said this in a car and there were uh, six of us in the car and it just kind of went over like a lead balloon. We're kind of honoring him for his observations, but <laughs> I don't think we really got it, appreciate it. It's like, Hey, back yeah. off. Well, it was yeah. like, yeah, that's not a criticism, is it? <laughs> and then his... That's good. Yeah. And then his second observation, John, was simply um, that he notices in the Western world that we hate kings. Mm. We hate mm. kings. We don't want this man to be our king. Yeah. Not referring to a particular individual at the moment, you know, president, yeah. governor, mayor, whatever, but just a posture, right? Yeah. A posture of independence fears independence. We love our independence. Yeah. And a posture of, we hate kings. Like, we immediately, naturally distrust someone in leadership. And here's what I'm struck by this morning is, yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. that, that that's a bad thing. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm aware of my own. Like, that describes me. Yeah. And I'm aware of Jesus saying, I'm a leader. Like, you got a problem with that? I mean, this whole thing's built on leadership. You live in a kingdom. I'm feeling the collision of that yeah. in my own consciousness, awareness, internal world. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I love my independence, and I distrust kings. And yet, I live in a kingdom yes. that's built on a whole different principle, right? So... This is going to be a rich, rich field of conversation, I think, for us. Yeah. You know, John, when you say Christ says, I'm a leader, that's either very comforting and inviting or very disruptive. Or both. Yes. Or yes. both. Yeah. I, I think it pushes into things in us. Yes. Whether based on our experience or, frankly, based on kind of the arrogant posture of Luke 19 and the minas, you know, which I just think is kind of a defiance. You know, I think there's both kind of 
woundedness and the sabotage of something that was meant to be good, just like fathering. Mm-hmm. But I think there's also just this kind of fierce, independent pushback yeah. that's not a reflection of something holy in me. Yeah. And so I am looking forward to these conversations. Jesus, show us where you're taking us. Show us what you want to say to us about leading following, about the categories of a kingdom, having a king, about you and your heart, and what really good leading and following look like. Show us that, Jesus, in these conversations. You've been listening to the Ransomed Heart Podcast. I'm John Eldridge and Craig McConnell. And I'm just so delighted that you're listening in, however you've picked this up. One of the ways you can hear our podcast now is on our new Ransomed Heart app. You can download that app and have it right there on your smartphone, and you can listen to our podcast anywhere you are. So that's a neat device and an upgrade for us on one of the ways that we offer these. So look forward to being with you next time.